Hi, I'm Joe Feeks, editor of Pig Health Today, and with me is Dr. Gabriella Buccini. She is an ecologist from the University of Vermont. Welcome, Gabriella. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Now, we're going to be talking about biosecurity, specifically biosecurity on pig farms, but you're from the University of Vermont and you're an ecologist. How did you end up at the Al Lehman conference talking about biosecurity? That's a great question. Uh, my background uh, provided skills in modeling and using data, and that's how I, I navigated different disciplines and I was I became part of this project, this biosecurity project led by Dr. Julie Smith at the, univers at the University of Vermont. And in particular, she's interested in the human behavior. And traditionally, you, uh, people give out uh, surveys to understand how producers might respond to outbreaks or to emergency uh, situation in uh, disease. And we came up with a different approach to that, that involves um, simulations and video games that we call digital experimental games. And so that's why modeling comes into, into the picture. Okay, and I want to get into all that, but you touched on something that I, I think is um, probably paramount to any biosecurity program, because you can have all the rules in the world, all the standard operating procedures, but it really does come down to human behavior, doesn't it? Yes, it's a, it's a big, big aspect of it. And I learned so much during these two days at the conference. There is the epidemiological part that is very well developed. I see how many epidemiologists have developed um, great models to explain how a virus uh, can spread through a system. But then I see also the, the concern that they have about people respecting the biosecurity measures uh, complying and adopting biosecurity protocols on a farm. And they know that sometimes people can you know, cut, cut edge because maybe there is not enough time. Mm -hmm. There are lots of tasks on a farm to, uh, to do. So yeah, it is uh, the human side is, uh, is an important well, aspect Well, it's human it. nature, I think, to try to take shortcuts and look at it and say, well, if, if you left a tool in the barn that going through all those biosecurity procedures may not be necessary because it's just going to take a moment to go in and get that tool, but it is a breach in biosecurity. Right, and it, it has consequences. And that's why in our research, we link that biosecurity, biosecurity with human behavior and then to the risk attitude that human beings have. So that risk attitude is what plays the important role on the decision that we make day, uh, day to day or strategically and tactically for the future. What do we want to adopt for a farm? Uh, do I want to comply with this protocol uh, in, on biosecurity? So each one of us has a different attitude towards risk and that is manifested in the decision and ultimately the behavior that we have. Now I know you're an ecologist but it almost seems like you should be a psychologist when you're talking about human behavior and, and biosecurity, I mean, that has to be a big part of it. It is, and that's why our project in a way is unique because uh, Dr. Julie Smith made sure to have um, a team that covered all these aspects of the, of the issue. So we work with uh, experts in communication, we have uh, sociologists, we have economists, and then we have modelers, and all of these needs to come together to have a, a more complete understanding of the, of the problem. And so what have you learned? What do you understand about um, attitudes and, and risks associated with biosecurity and people's behavior? Wow, this is a great question, and I have fresh results from, uh, uh, from some analysis that we ran recently. So from one of the games where uh, we had people playing like managers of farms. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have your own farm, you're surrounded by other farms, you have information about how much biosecurity is around, so your neighbors. And this is a computer game? It's a say? really uh -huh. computer game, yeah. You play, so you, you play other video games, but you're now the owner of the farm and you mm -hmm. have a budget and you have to decide how much you want to invest in biosecurity. And so you have information about disease. You know that there is disease in the area, Sometimes we give information on where it is. Sometimes you have information about biosecurity. 
And so you have to make that decision. And because there is a, a cost benefit, right? If you start with a budget and if you invest, your score at the end is lower. But on the other hand, you invest in, in security. So where do you make that decision is very personal and people have different strategies on where and when they want to invest. And we pay real money to them because we really want them to play sincerely because they know that in the end, if, if they do well, they will, com they will go out with like, a good amount of money. So they were paid to, to yes. take the study? Okay. Right, because it's the best way for them yeah. to really play sincerely. Uh, and so what is important here, so we collect the data and, uh, and we study their risk attitude. Now, uh, the results that we see is that in general, when there is, uh, when in the system, they know that there is high contagion of this disease, they tend to, to adopt more biosecurity. When the contagion is low, well, they, they take a little bit more risk. They say, okay, maybe we can make a little bit more money. And then it's important to know, for example, what we see is that if they know that their neighbors have high biosecurity around them, then they kind of like play more risky. And instead, oh, really? yeah, it's the, what we call the effect of the, the free rider effect, right? If you, if you feel that you're protected, uh, then you're willing to risk a little bit more. But if around you, you have really low biosecurity, it's like, okay, no, I need to put biosecurity on my farm. And so they, they invest more on the, on the biosecurity. Another very interesting results we had is, um, so from all these strategies, playing strategies, we were able to cluster people in four main uh, groups. Some people are very, very risk averse. So whether there is high contagion or low contagion in the, of the disease, they invest in biosecurity, they want to have biosecurity high all the no way, matter as what. no yeah. matter what, as quickly as possible. Then you have the opposite um, behavior where some people are very risk takers and high contagion, low contagion, they play risky. Then another interesting group uh, is the opportunistics where they, they really take in the information that they're given in the, uh, in, the, in the game. And so they play more risky when the contagion is low but then when the, the contagion goes up and it's high, they really implement biosecurity. So these are the opportunistic. And then some people are risk neutral and they, they just play, but they don't seem to respond to, the, to that contagion. And so their response is like, neutral. They really don't seem to respond and we don't know really what they were, mm -hmm. <laughs> they were imagining yeah. or they were uh, thinking in their mind when they were um, deciding their, their strategy. And so this is very important if you think about it, because sometimes we want to create messages so that you want to nudge people towards more risk averse behaviors. And so how do you communicate the importance of having bi higher biosecurity? How do you nudge, how do you shift a population towards uh, more risk averse behaviors? Yeah, and I, I wanted to get to that because I mean, the fact that you had all of these different results doesn't surprise me because people are different. You have different attitudes and different upbringings, different education right. and so forth. And some people are just more conscientious than others. Um, but what's the takeaway message for the pork industry? I mean, how do you, how do you change these attitudes? So that's where the, the communication experts are key. And there are two, two essential parts in building a message. So sometimes you give a lot of instructions, but if they're not relevant, if they don't touch a person uh, somehow emotionally, there is something that a person needs to feel. It's like, oh yes, this is important for me, for the industry, for the farm, for the animals. It has to touch you uh, in a place where it's like, oh yes, I'm willing to, to respond, to comply. And then another important part of a message is the action. So giving just, uh, the why, sure, it's important, but you need to really tell people what to do when something happens. Clearly, uh, short messages and 
And when you say when something happens, meaning? Well, if there is risk or there is even an outbreak, that's even more, uh, more important to, for people to know what they need to do quickly. And in general, though, they need to know that biosecurity needs to stay high all the time. Because as humans, you know, we kind of yes. tend to relax a little bit. Oh, nothing is around. There is no danger. So I can, maybe I can cut that corner mm -hmm. and go quickly. Uh, or so it's important for them to, to know that it's, uh, it's an ongoing issue and their action uh, is important. They are part of a, of a larger system and their contribution is key no matter at what level they are, uh, they're working. So they need to understand why, and then they need to understand the potential economic and animal health consequences right. if they don't follow these regulations. Right, and it needs to be really relevant uh, for them, so personally relevant, mm -hmm. and that's important. So in other words, if, if these pigs get sick, and we lose money, you could lose your job, that kind of? For example, for some people that can be uh, a good driver, so that's why knowing somehow the, the risk attitude, what is in which way people respond to risk, it's important because you can tailor those, uh, those messages to respond to, to different risk attitudes. Now people can be like dogs. They respond to rewards. Um, right, what, that's right. what kind of, um, did you look at anything like a, a reward system for people who practice good biosecurity? Uh, I know it's one of the the strategies, so you can either give rewards and then there are the other part is the punishment. But when I use the word nudging, it's really a third way of, of moving a population. And that comes from letting these people be part of the decision because they are aware of the benefits that themselves receive and the, the whole society receive. So when you nudge, you really help people to understand. So there is, it's not so much about being reward, because then there is not much understanding. You just go for the, for the cookie, right? Yeah, right? And if there is punishment also, you're not, you don't grow, you don't understand. So that nudging is key because it helps people to be part of the, of the process and the understanding. Now, the people who are involved in your study, were they actual hog producers? So we had the study, so people who played the games first, we had the general public, and we, we had thousands of them playing. And then we wanted to make sure that their way of playing would not be very different from how a producer plays. So that's why it's an excellent uh, question. And some of us went to the World Pork Expo this summer and had uh, producers playing the same game, and we saw, we verified that producers actually play in the same way. Gabriella, so it's been fascinating the, yeah, hearing about your study, good. and we'll have to um, learn more about it as it continues to unfold. We've been talking to Dr. Gabriella Buccini. She is an ecologist at the University of Vermont and looking at biosecurity. Thanks again, Gabriella. My pleasure.